Welcome back, Breakaway Wealth. I'm your host, Jim Oliver, and with me today is Maurice Philogene. Maurice, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. I love that word. Thank you for having me, Jim. Absolutely. No, I didn't butcher your name, did I? No, no, no. you got it, brother. <laughs> you got uh, it. So I always want to make sure that I say it right. And uh, so Maurice, tell us, just, let's just start, let's just dive in, man, and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, brother, great to be here. Um, I'm based in the D.C. area, so born in New York, raised in Boston, live in D.C., but I split my time between the Mediterranean. Um, I'm an, a Haitian immigrant kid. Love the concept of wealth. It's important, but I define it more in the freedom mindset, if you will. Uh, and then rather than like doing the story, I'll just tell you what I'm doing nowadays. I am a real estate investor uh, doing apartment complexes in the U.S., but I'm also developing land overseas in the Mediterranean as a lifestyle thing. I retired from the W-2. All three of my long-term careers uh, as of October of last year. So I was a senior executive at a consulting firm for 25 years. I was a federal agent and lieutenant colonel in the military for 22 years. And then somehow in all that mess, I became a street cop in DC for 15 years. And I retired from all that last year. Um, and I am just, you know, living a freedom-ish lifestyle, trying to live life to the fullest because we only have a certain amount of time on this big blue planet. I love that, man. Well, first of all, thank you for your service, both yeah. in the military and as a police officer. That's really cool. You, I bet you got some really good stories being a cop in D.C. I, you got to, I mean, probably some brutal, my my, uh, my oldest daughter is a paramedic. And I'll tell you what, I don't like her stories, man. Some of it is pretty brutal, but I bet you've got some uh, being a uh, police officer as well. But Here's what I really like what you said about your story. So Haitian immigrant comes, serves his country, serves his city, serves, mm -hmm. right? A lot of service in there for you. So mm -hmm. tell me about that. Tell me about the mentality of being an immigrant from, you know, because most of the people listening to this show never lived in another country, right? Yeah. And I don't want to yeah. say that they're entitled or they don't realize how good they have it. But, yeah. you know, we can complain about because all governments are corrupt, but but ours is probably uh, as good as you're going to get when it comes to being able to break away and have freedom. Yeah, man, I, I've been to 100 countries over 300 times now. So when I say I know the planet, I know the planet. Um, my family was not poor, but we were broke growing up. You know what I mean? And what my what, what my family gave me was education. You know, and then they they got me to college and pretty much said, uh, look, our job was to get you here. You got to figure everything out go, going forward. But the beautiful thing about the planet, man, wherever you go, and I picked this up very early, probably in my early 20s, people just don't have what we have materially. They don't need it. I mean, they really don't need it. That's why I started to realize that the world was a lot bigger than Boston, Massachusetts, where I grew up because I saw people making the equivalent of 200, 300 bucks a month and were wildly happy every weekend having chascos in Brazil or cookout or something like that. And that's what they were angling for. You know what I mean? Um, so my perspective has certainly been skewed. Let's say the perspective of what success is has been skewed by my interactions with people all over the planet, my own family. We just don't need that much to be happy. And I've kind of operated that way my whole life. You know what I know, and I'm sure you know too, Maurice. A lot of people that have a lot of money that are really miserable. Oh, and so yeah. you know, being wealthy is not about money, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, you 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 said it. It's about freedom. And so the the there's a couple of things that we always say is uh, money gives you choices, choices give you freedom, right? Mm -hmm. But I but I think that there's another thing that's out there right now that we have to change our mentality and it's it's always been there um but but it's it's coming to light more and more and more and it's that we um trade a lot of people trade time for money right yeah. Yeah. and if our human life is measured in time then our time is is our life and mm -hmm. so if governments are debasing the monetary supply right and they're stealing from us then in in you know in inflation and taxation etc 
um, you know, that inflation is a stealth tax, right? We're not approving it. We're not voting on it. It's just happening. And it's stealing from us. It's legal plunder, as Frederick Bastiat would say. Now, yeah. if they're stealing our time, they're stealing our life. That's the very definition of slavery, stealing someone's life. Yeah. And so yeah. we have to realize that we are slaves as long as financial slaves, as long as we exchange time for money. So That's talk it. about how you were able to break away from that and 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 stop exchanging time for money and start to become free freer financially. Brother, um, everything you hit on resonates with me. There's only we look at this life thing in years. The average lifespan is 79 years. That's 28,000 days. I'm 46 years old. I have 10,900 and change left. I'm not wasting any of it. Um, in my early 20s, when I graduated from good old University of Virginia, I just had this notion that I didn't want to sit behind a desk for a long time. I happened to pick up Personal Finance for Dummies. If you remember that, that yellow series of books, there was a yeah. passage in there, Jim, on passive income. And I was like, so I can make money divorce of my need to physically be somewhere. That resonated with me. I found real estate and I was like, and this is back in 2002. So this is right at, in that cycle, right? There was a boom cycle going on back then. I started buying individual condos, one appreciated for 30 grand. My father explained equity to me. I was like, what? I went to the library. There was no Google back then. I sat down, I read 10 books. And by the end of the year, I had bought 10 more places. Fast forward, I talked to a real estate agent and she gave me a really cool idea. She was like, Maurice, instead of trying to buy like the big flashy condo in DC for 500 grand, why don't you go ahead and buy, and I will help you buy small ones, 80 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, and then pay them off. She told me to go buy these little things and pay them off over time and it stuck with me. So at age 23, I just started buying condos and a couple single family homes. And I systematically used my paycheck from work. I paid myself first, right? My future me was my number one bill. And by 2014, I had bought 35 single family homes. And then I used some of the equity and my paychecks over time to pay off 18. So by 2014, I was generating more salary from passive income than from my job. And that is the holy grail because what, what, what that ends up doing is if you can create more passive income than you have expenses, you're free. People, people have it confused. People think you need $50 million in the bank to be free or something like that. No, you just need the ability to cover your basic needs and then just a little bit more to live with an abundant mindset. I created that by 2014, but I kept working because once you create that, you start to realize that life is not just about money. I had other goals to achieve. That's awesome. You know, the... What I always say too is, you know, I like to use the word passive revenue because when you have real estate, it's really not all income because you have all this money flowing in and it's even better than ordinary income because it has depreciation, yes. it has appreciation, it has right. tax benefits and deductions. And, you know, when you're flying to the Bahamas, you're, you're you know, you're working, right? Those, those are work trips and deductible and meals and all this other stuff. And so, you know, but when your passive revenue exceeds your ideal standard of living, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever that is for you, like you said, and, and, and I really respect, like you said about people in Brazil, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles and I always, uh, my favorite day was Sunday and it wasn't, I didn't know anything about church. So it wasn't because of church or anything, but, <laughs> but it was my friend, uh, Michael had his whole family would come over. They were Hispanic. They would they would cook at the best food you've ever had in your life. And yeah. I would just, you know, uh, kind of happen to stop by about the time that uh, the food was being served. So um, <laughs> um, I think they knew I was doing it on purpose, but, um, but I love that. And they were happy, you know, they were really yeah. happy. Um, it, you know, you have that family, you have that tradition, you have all those things. So happiness, you know, Tony Robbins said the uh, simple uh, definition of happiness is making progress. And, nice. and I think that we all want to be making progress in whatever we're doing. And, um, you know, what do you think holds people back from being financially free 
or realizing that that's the goal. Now, I know mm -hmm. that everything tells us, you know, we're, we advocate for infinite banking concept, which is you put your, you put your money in your bank, uh, mm -hmm. like in an insurance contract, and then you can use the insurance company's money to go buy real estate or use it for the down payment or your renovation or whatever. Um, but talk about like, what do you think holds people back? Society and competition. Right. And let me like explain that. what I mean by that. When I, when I was working for that consulting firm for 25 years, I was asked to be a, to enter the partner process four times. I didn't want that. I was making a really good salary around 200 grand ish over time. I probably could have made 400 as a partner, but I'd rather work the 30 to 40 hours rather than 100 hours and then use that salary to create a business and real estate on the outside. So I was never concerned about competing with my peers. All we're taught from grade school, high school, college is sit in the desk, look forward. You gotta be the MVP, you gotta be the valedictorian, you gotta be the prom king, you gotta be the executive vice president, you gotta be the CEO. No, you gotta be happy. And whatever your definition of happiness is, it can be accelerated by getting something like financial and time freedom, but you gotta define it for you. So. A lot of my peers now who see that I've quote unquote retired, whatever retired means, doesn't really mean anything nowadays, but they see that I left the W-2, they're asking me how I did this all these years because they're still there. They were going to all the networking, soul sucking events. They were um, competing with the next person for the executive vice president role when it really had no, it didn't even resonate with them. They were just copying the person next to them because that's what they thought that success would be like. So that's what I think holds a lot of people back is comparison with other people or not defining what their purpose is on this planet in the first place. And I, and I, you know, I mentioned to you that I became a street cop. That was post 9-11. I was deployed for the military as a federal agent overseas. I loved it so much that when I got back to local community, I was like, man, I just want to be a street cop because I, I liked helping people. So I found a way to do both. I was an exec during the day, full-time street cop at night. I just never told anybody. It was a crazy schedule because that was my purpose. So I would get up every day, go to the corporate gig during the day, come home, do homework with the kids, sleep for two hours, get up, go midnight patrol at night because that was my purpose. Like that was my progress. That was my Tony Robbins. I'm making progress. I'm happy because I chose to do something that would make me happy, right? Do the financial stuff, do the purposeful stuff, and then you can create these lifestyles that you don't need a vacation from. It was very, um, I'm really happy I did it, even though I barely slept, but I'm really happy I went that, went that route. But I, I think that that kind of stuff holds people back. They look at what their peer is doing and they never figure out what's gonna make them happy on this planet in the first place. So you said something that is really, um, that I'm really passionate about is mm. we're taught in school to compete right? Wow. We're taught in school to compete against each other. And that if we collaborate, that's called cheating, right? Right. And that's not the real world. In life is when I meet somebody like you, and I have somebody on the podcast, or I meet somebody in our community at Create Tailwind is, um, you know, I, my first thought is, how do I collaborate with this person? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I help serve this person? Because I know that if I could, if I could do something to help Maurice, then then we're, we can grow together. And if I don't, if we don't grow together, and we don't collaborate, then I've helped Maurice help somebody else and he's going to grow and, and be a bigger influence with somebody. So, you know, that I think that we teach, you know, Robert Kiyosaki says 50 years from now, we'll look back and we'll feel, we'll know that it was barbaric to set children in a room for eight hours and expect them to learn sitting mm -hmm. behind a desk and, and, and that we test them and, all of these things in the wrong way. We teach them to be um, uh, basically, you know, financial citizens, financial slaves. I mean, and I, you know, I use that word because it is slavery when when you're exchanging your time for money, and 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 it's so simple to decide to get out of that. And um, I, I've referenced this before, but Malcolm X talked about the difference between a field slave and a house slave. We're mm -hmm. really comfortable slaves. You're mm -hmm. making $200,000 a year. I was competing. I remember, you know, uh, when I became a partner, 
I got mm -hmm. my first paycheck and I went, Hey, what happened? And they said, Oh, well, you don't get the salary anymore. Now you just get what, you know, your, your distribution. Oh, what you kill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. You eat what you kill. So right, right. Uh, guess what? You didn't kill very good over the last two weeks. So you, right. your paycheck's not very good. And, yeah. and I went, wait a minute, be careful what you ask for, because now right. you're an owner. Now you, you get to pay the bills and, and you get what's left. Right. But, um, yeah. So I, I love that when you talk about that, and, but what your family did, and you mentioned this in the beginning, was they taught you about education. So you, you said something that most people would never do. And people ask me how I learned as much as I learned about infinite banking. And it's really two things. I read everything, watched everything I could on infinite banking. And I was blessed enough to have Nelson Nash the, the godfather of infinite banking, the person that God uh, anointed to discover infinite banking, God created it, obviously, but, but Nelson discovered it to mentor me and show me. So did you have mentors along the way? Uh, no, or, or, there were influencers that uh, helped you? Yeah, and I'm going to double down on your point about collaboration. Oh, that, that, journey I referenced from 03 to 2014 of all those single family homes, that was me by myself. That was entrepreneurial depression personified. I was on my own every single weekend, tenants, toilets, termites, all that. Relatively successful in that space. When I got a mentor, so in 2015, there was a natural shift to want to do multifamily. It was a goal thing. It wasn't a money thing. It's like, I wanted to keep growing. So I wanted to move in a different way. I hired a mentor, I paid for it. And what that mentor did was break my limiting beliefs that, hey Mo, why do you think that you can't do apartment complexes but everybody else can? So I ended up switching into the apartment syndication game. In the last three years, I've, I think I'm closing on apartment complex number 26 in May. Two mentors have helped me along that route. And then to your point of collaboration, I found the right partners life-minded partners. I don't really give two squats about business, to be honest. I want people that I resonate with from an integrity perspective. They understand my freedom lifestyle, my desire to be mobile on this planet. I don't want employees. I want systems. I want processes. I want tools. I found them. We formed a company um, and we have done more. I don't know. We've done like 130 million in the last two years in assets. I can't do that without them. I could never do that on my own. So between mentors and collaborating with like-minded people who understand life and that life is more than money, what I have created and given back to community in the last three years has been nothing short of epic in my own life, not comparable to other people. Um, yeah. I, you, you, you cannot move. Listen, you can do things on your own. I totally get it but it just gets accelerated when you have mentors or when you are modeling someone like Jim Oliver on infinite banking or whatever, but get yourself around other people who know what they're doing. You know, it's uh, there's a, there's a quote or a saying that says uh, alone, you go fast together, you go far. Right. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I agree with that. And you kind of just said that alone, you were, you were making progress. You're going fast. Nobody, you know, you don't have to collaborate. You don't have to share anything with anybody, right? Yeah. But you also don't get anything back. And what I love is I love that recip reciprocity of we share everything. So like on our, we have a community, createtailwind or community, community.createtailwind.com. Mm -hmm. And on there, we share a bunch of stuff and people share their ideas and what they've done, just like you and like how you've, you know, broken away and everything else. And people just share it. Like, here's what I did, right? And what 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 happens is somebody else comes in and they share something about what you did. And then all of a sudden that creativity just grows like yeah. this, like, like it's a reverse yeah. funnel. I've always hated funnels, you know, like, oh, here, I got this great idea. And now I'm trying to make you a customer. You know, like I want the reverse funnel. You come like in that. and then we explode together, right? And yeah. Um, yeah. and I would say that whales don't swim through funnels. So people that have a lot of money, once they're in a funnel, they go, I got to get out of this funnel. And, yeah. and, and I know it's a good marketing thing and everything else. Um, and I'm sure it works. But, you know, uh, to me, 
it's about uh, that having that go-giver mentality. I can tell that you have that. Uh, what are what are what are some of the resources that people, if they want to get to know more about you? I mean, do you have a book? Do you have a website? You know, tell me. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm just myself. My my mission back to people. I have two missions. I one is to give back to people through the platforms like yours. Anybody can develop freedom lifestyle. And there's five freedom principles, financial freedom, time freedom, geographic freedom. I, I am all over the world constantly. Um, freedom of purpose. I think it's really important for us to find purpose and freedom to build meaningful relationships. The way you talked about, I'm developing real estate in the Mediterranean right now because I found and meaningfully went after a relationship of someone who was already doing it. Now we are the best of friends and we're building real estate in the Med. That's crazy. I'm just a kid from Boston, right? Um, the way people can learn about that type of stuff is just LinkedIn. I post about it unapologetically all the time. The fact that being a CEO is one man's definition of success, but living life extremely well and accessing this big blue planet is another man's definition. That's my definition. And then from a business perspective, um, my company's Quattro Capital. We are ad value syndicators. Of course, there's a lot around. I love what we do because we are highly focused on improving the quality of life for residents in the complexes that we own and then working with investors to give them their version of financial freedom, exiting the W-2 and what have you. So LinkedIn is great. TheQuattroWay.com is the website for the company. And then of course, Instagram where I show all the lifestyle stuff. I think in the last three weeks, I was in five countries or so. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's just, uh, connect with me anywhere. And I, I, I love talking about this stuff so much, uh, probably to a fault. I'm always trying to help everybody that I can. Well, you know, I, 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 I understand that last comment that, you know, to a fault, because sometimes you can get to where you're trading your time, helping other people. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. and now you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, but it's great when those people just take what you show them and run with it and yeah. um you know you you uh um it's hard when they don't that's the part yeah. that's the part where you waste your time and their time because if they're not ready and they're not uh uh if they're not if they haven't made that decision to break away and to be free then 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 you could talk till your blue you know yeah. They, yeah you just they they won't get it so um but you know, uh, Maurice, we could we could talk about this uh, all day, and I and I love when uh, a guest and 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 I'm in alignment with them on on their philosophy and what they're trying to do. So mm -hmm. um, I commend you for out being out there and being free and being an example of uh, how to be financially free and happy and making progress. So tell me, um, I know there's been a lot of things that have influenced you over your lifetime, but. Uh, I like to ask everybody, if God came down from heaven and said, Maurice, you can only retain the knowledge that you've received from one book outside of the Bible, what would that one book be? And I, I really want to say two, but I'll say okay, one. You got it. Two books. Okay. Here, because one God, is, God's an abundant God. If you is, ask for two books, he, he will give you two. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. So I am very much a student of the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. And it, it has nothing to do with creating a four hour work week. It has everything to do with automating life, making it less cluttered, making it simple. So I don't receive mail anywhere, it comes into an online interface. My, the, my chosen business is outsourced, excuse me, my chosen business, I have no employees. It's all business processes, apps, things like that. I, I need to feel light and free to be able to get around this planet and do a lot of things. I could scale my business to something and become brick and mortar. I have no, no desire to do that at all. For Our Work Week is a wonderful book for living. And then the one that really hit me the hardest was um, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Love it. Love it. It, it. it just, it floored me when I read it and it helped me figure out my purpose on this planet. I have three. And if you don't know the book, Victor was a Holocaust survivor. He had to find meaning in life after losing his wife, his mom, his dad, his sister. Like, why are we even on this planet when you go through that much suffering? I found my three purposes by reading that book. One, I need to be in love with my family, um, 
my significant other and my kids, by, by far. Two, I know that I need to be loved by a community. When I am loved by a community, that means I have done something right by them. I retired from being a police officer last year, but I still have citizens who see me and will still call me to this day. So I know that I've impacted them. When, uh, when I do my philanthropy work overseas in the Mediterranean or in the Mideast, I have people that call me all the time. I was in Lebanon this Christmas, paying for people's surgeries and moving the needle for them. That makes me feel good. So I wanna be loved by a community. And then thirdly, I want constant learning. That's why I travel. I wanna be immersed in things that I know nothing about. We need the beginner's mindset to feel alive on this planet. When we get into this rat race of pressing repeat every single day, life gets monotonous. So my way of constant learning is by travel and by business, of course. But those three uh, purposes are what drive me every day. And I figured them out from that book. You know, you, that's, a, that's a great word, purpose, because we all need purpose, right? And, and we all need to serve other people. And, and you just kind of encapsulated that into uh a couple of things that you've done just recently but you know it's we feel good when we serve other people and serve them in a way and change their lives i mean that's really what life's all about right and um um so thank you for being on the show maurice i yeah. uh, look forward to getting to know you better uh as well just outside the show and anybody that's uh, uh listening and and is is moved and motivated to take action then good for you just jump in you won't let yourself drown i promise you you you'll get to the other side of the creek or the river whatever your visual yeah. is 